What is happening, fish and friends? Welcome to another episode. I hope you're having an amazing night. I know I am because tonight we're talking about combos. Combos for your lipless crankbaits and square bills and broken rods. Admittedly, I am a fishing nerd and I love talking about rods, reels, baits, or specifically for tonight that hook, rod, line, relationship. Now I love the lipless crankbaits and square bills together because I fish them different than just the standard, you know, six foot diving crankbait. You throw it out, you reel it in, you're trying to get it to carry them off rocks and you know, do crazy stuff. With the lipless and square bill, I'm a lot more aggressive. I'm throwing them next to wood, banging them off wood, tossing them on top of grass and yanking it out of there. And yes, I'm throwing them up there in the rocks in the shallow water, trying to bang them off stuff, make them look like little bait fish coming through there. Yes, these babies are killer right now for fall. However, there are some things you may want to think about on the combo that you have, or if you're deciding to pick up a new combo, what you might want to look for in something if you're fishing a lipless or square bill. But you don't need something special. Remember, this series is about what I'm using and trying to help everyone out there in case you have a few questions. I'm not here to tell you what to use, the right thing to use, just try to give you ideas. So because this is the hook rod line relationship, let's start with the hooks. Ah, yes, the hooks. When it comes to hooks, I break it down to a few different categories. First thing I'm looking at is the hook wire. So on a regular Strike King bait, these are relatively light wire hooks. They're not the strongest, and if you're fishing them on something too heavy, there's a good chance you're going to bend them out. So hooks like this, lighter wire hooks, a lot of the stock hooks out there, I'm going to fish on more of a moderate action crankbait rod. The bend in the rod is going to allow you to fight that fish and not straighten these out. Now you compare that to something like this. This is one that I've modified. These are some 2X strong short shank extra wide gap hooks. You can get away throwing something like this on a medium heavy or just a medium power fast action rod. These are stronger hooks. So I'm going to use these more around wood, cover, grass, anything where I'm ripping it through and that fish could technically get hung up. I want to make sure my hooks are going to pull up so I can horse that fish out of there. The second thing I'm looking at for my hooks is how are the fish eating the bait. I personally always start out with a short shank extra wide gap hook because these are closer to the bait and the tips are turned in a little bit. So when this is coming over rock and wood, these are a lot less likely to get hung up than something like this, the stock hooks on just a regular lipless. These are a size four on this half ounce. These are only a little size six on this quarter ounce. But I'm telling you, even on this half ounce lipless, I could replace these with some size four short shank, extra wide gap, and it is a lot less likely to get hung up than these regular hooks. So when am I gonna swap out from these little extra wide gap short shank? to these regular round bin hooks because they definitely do have their place. Well, if I keep losing fish, I've got them pinned for a little bit and they keep popping off, or if I notice that all the fish I'm getting are just barely hooked, kind of like on the outside of the mouth or just barely on one of these back treble hooks, there's a good chance that they're really not engulfing it. They're just kind of swiping at it. That's often what happens with my jerk baits. In the fall, this is a size four, two X strong, Round bin gamagatsu hook, and you can see the difference there. You can see this is a thicker, stouter hook as opposed to the stock hooks on here. If I'm getting a lot of times where the fish are just swiping at it, and I'm having trouble getting hooked up, switching over to this round bin hook will help you hook up. Moving on to the size of the lipless. Now, the next thing I think about when I'm using hooks on a lipless or square bill is the size of it. If I'm just using a little bait like this, there's a good chance I'm throwing it on a lighter power rod. This is only a quarter ounce. I could throw this on a lot of the medium power rods up there that only go to, you know, half ounce or five eighths of an ounce. But if I am bouncing up to something like this, a half ounce or five eighths lipless crankbait, I'm usually going to be throwing this on a medium heavy rod. So you'll notice like this one, the stock hooks that come on this, these are little tiny size six hooks. Didn't change these out when I used it. And just for regular use, look, I already bent that one hook out. Because I'm throwing a bigger bait, a heavier bait, and I'm usually throwing this on a medium heavy, I can beef these hooks up. I can easily go up to a size four short shank extra wide gap as long as the fish are eating it. I'm going to have a stronger hook that's less likely to get snagged. And that's what I want, a stronger, heavier wire hook when I'm fishing a heavier power rod like a medium heavy. The final thing I'm going to keep in mind when I'm thinking about my hooks and changing them out is what size of fish am I around? If I know I'm just fishing a bunch of local ponds and maybe a three pounder is the biggest in there, a hook like this is gonna penetrate nice and easy. It's a light wire hook. I can use more of that typical crankbait style rod and let the bend in the rod keep that fish pinned. I'm also not gonna be ripping huge holes in the fish. Using a lighter wire hook like this, I can get it into whatever the fish is and I have to worry about ripping open a big hole that's gonna make this hook fall out easier. But if I at all have the potential of catching big fish, I know there's five, six, eight pounders in there, I want to step up to that heavier wire hook. The last thing you want is to get a big fish pinned, only have one of these little trebles in there and have that fish come up and head shake 
and bend that out. So that is why I typically err on the side of caution and uh, get rid of these tiny sock hooks and go up to something like these, little heavier wire. But again, it depends on the type of combo that you have. Speaking of combos, let's talk about the rods and line. That was really slow, supposed to be a fast, dramatic. Ah, yes, the rods. This is where it becomes like Ben and Jerry's ice cream. There's a whole bunch of options out there, and a lot of them are pretty darn good. Well, maybe that's an exaggeration, but I have used quite a few different combos over the years for square bills and lipless crankbaits. I first started throwing my lipless crankbaits and square bills on a seven foot, medium heavy, fast action rod. I just didn't have a lot of combos, and I had to use what I had in my arsenal to make them work. In particular, my favorite rod was this. This is an old number eight hellbent. I like this rod because it was a medium heavy fast action, but as you can see, it bends more like a moderate fast tip. Instead of that 80, 20, it gets down closer to the 70, 30. It's a very flexible, strong rod, and it really reminded me more of a composite type rod. Now this is just a graphite rod, but I tell you, it was bendy and strong. So what are the advantages of using something like this, a moderate fast, medium heavy, or just a medium heavy that you have that's a little bit softer in the tip than others? Well, how about casting distance? To me, seven foot is a great all around size. I recommend that, it's a good place to start. You can go longer if you want, or you can go shorter. The seven foot for me gives a good moderate casting distance. I can whip that bait up there pretty far. And it's got really good leverage. This is a medium heavy, so I transition from that tip into a good stout backbone. Well, why is that important? Like I said, I like to fish the lipless and square bills in a lot of cover. So when I'm coming over those big logs, if I have a little bit stronger rod, like a medium heavy, I can pop it over that stuff and through that vegetation a whole lot easier than if I have a real noodly, moderate, fast, strictly crankbait rod. I also like moving up to the medium heavy combos when I'm throwing a heavier lipless. This is a red eye shad, a half ounce. And I like to go to these when I'm fishing a little bit deeper, you know, six to 10 foot water from the bank. If I'm bouncing off rocks like that, it's a lot easier to keep a half ounce or even a, you know, a three quarter ounce on the bottom ticking off those rocks than if I were just throwing a little quarter ounce takes longer to get down there. I'm bouncing it. I'm probably bringing it up more than I should. So for those heavier baits, I like that medium heavy rod. Now what's the drawback to a medium heavy? Well, it's powerful. Yeah, the old Strike King red eye shads. Sorry, Strike King, I love the baits, but the hooks just aren't great. And that's okay. Some people can't afford to put new hooks on or they just don't like to mess with it. So I would advise staying away from a medium heavy on the regular stock hooks or lighter wire hooks. There's a good chance that you're gonna bend those out and especially if you land a big fish, I would hate to see them. Come up, head shake, and straighten the hook. It's happened to me. That's what happens when you try to use one combo for everything. It's gonna be good at some things, but not the others. So to counteract the stiffier, heavier rod, if you have only a combo like this and you wanna throw lipless and square bills on it, you can go to a softer, stretchier line. So something like a, a copolymer. Um, I've used the P-Line, Fluoro Clear has been great. Uh, I've used some of the Cast King Fluoro Coat, um, but I would recommend usually going up a size in those because that line seems to be a smaller diameter, not as abrasion resistance, resistance, resistant, as 100% fluorocarbon. 100% fluorocarbon is much better around rocks and wood than a copolymer, but the little bit of stretch in that copolymer can help out a lot. So just keep in mind, if you're throwing a medium heavy like this and you're getting a good hook set, but you keep losing that fish, they keep popping off, or if you ever notice a straightened hook, if you're not already using a copolymer or a monofilament on something like this, I would suggest it. That little bit of stretch will help you out. What do we got next, Johnny? I am glad you asked. The second combo we're gonna go over is that crankbait combo. When you think of a crankbait combo, you think of a rod like this, right? I can almost take this baby all the way around and touch tip to the shaft. Yes, that is typical with the crankbait rod. You get a very rubbery, flexible, some people will call it noodly feeling rod. This is my Speed Demon seven foot crankbait rod. It's a moderate power and as you can see, that baby bends, it's a very rubbery noodly rod. What are the advantages of that? Well, you remember we talked about this? The little bait with the light wire hooks? Light wire hooks are much better suited for a combo like this. That real rubbery bend, it's extremely hard for a fish to throw that, and it's a lot harder for you to put enough power into that to bend those hooks out. Overall, you're gonna have a much better hook up to land ratio. If you can get a hook solidly pinned, and those hooks penetrated into that fish's mouth, if you keep that rod bent all the way over like this, it's extremely hard for a fish to shake those free. You can take your time a little bit, plan back. As long as you're keeping that rod bent over, your likelihood of losing that fish is small. The casting distance for these is phenomenal. If you can get a crankbait rod, I don't care what brand you have out there, and get that on the back load, bend all the way over and fling it out there. You look at somebody like Kevin Van Dam, and he is loading that thing up and sailing those babies out there. Casting distance with a medium power, moderate action rod is awesome. So what does a combo like this lack? Well, power. 
If you're trying to drive real thick treble hooks into a fish's mouth with this, it can be a little tough unless you change out that line. I always go with a straight 100% fluorocarbon on this so there's no stretch. I've got all the bend in the rod I need to fight that fish. If I'm running a monofilament on this with a real soft bendy rod, there's a good chance on long casts you're going to lose fish. You're going to miss fish just because you don't get that hook penetration. Everything in your combo is stretchy or soft. So that's why I go with 100% fluorocarbon on this. I eliminate the stretch of the line. I use the rod to keep those hooks in there and fight the fish. Now additionally, if you get around a lot of rocks or wood or grass and you're trying to constantly pop it through with a moderate action rod, it becomes a little bit tougher. You're pulling on it and it's almost like one of those branches. You know, you get your lure stuck up in the tree and you're pulling it and the branch is just doing this and you can never get it broke. That's kind of like what it's like with this. But I'm not saying you can't do it that way. My old man uses mono with the crankbait rod and he loves it. So I always encourage you all out there, leave a comment below. If you're doing something just a little bit different and you have an idea that you think will help other fishing friends in our family, leave that comment below. I love hearing from all of you. Bring on the third combo. And last but not least, the combo that all of you have been seeing me throw a lot lately, I've absolutely fell in love with this. This is a six foot seven medium power fast action rod but it's a little bit soft. So what are the pros and cons of that? Well, going to a littler rod like this, it's got a little bit more whip in it. I can throw a little quarter ounce lipless like this. This happens to be the uh, exact lipless that I caught my personal best on. And this happens to be the combo that I caught my personal best on. It's a short rod, six foot seven. Man, I haven't fished anything under seven foot for probably three, four years. I've honestly wrote them off. Seven foot is very, very comfortable to me, but I wanted a shorter rod for jerk baits. Anything where you're working tip down, you're hitting the grass, wood, you know, if you're a bank angler, even some boat anglers are smacking the water, a shorter rod can help. This also really allows me when I'm walking along the banks to whip it under trees, over underhangs, a lot easier because it's a shorter accurate rod. If I was trying to do the same thing with an eight foot rod, I'm nowhere near as accurate. The cool thing about a medium power fast action is it goes right to that backbone a little bit sooner. This, if you can see that, see it's not as bendy as that moderate, but the backbone is not as stiff as the medium heavy. So this is a good in-between between that strict crankbait rod and just your regular all-purpose medium heavy. I'm popping it over rocks, comes over very easily. Bouncing it off of sticks, I get over a little one, I can pop it through there a lot easier than a really soft, noodly crankbait rod. And if I get it stuck in a little grass, I can pop it out of there real quick and easy. So it is soft enough to keep fish pinned. I have 100% fluorocarbon on here. This is Seaguar Red Label. You can get it at Walmart, it's cheap. Um, I have had no problems with it. I know people go straight to the Invisix. I put a little line conditioner on here and I'm okay with just a little bit line memory and having a little bit more affordable line. But with a combo like this, if you had a, a medium power fast action rod that was a little bit stiffer, I would again go over to that copolymer or monofilament just so you're playing the best of both worlds. Your rod might be a little bit stiffer, but that little bit of stretch in the line will help you keep the fish pinned. So for me, this has been a, an excellent all-around combo for throwing those. And on all of these combos, no matter what they are, I've been throwing a 7-ish something to one reel. I like a higher speed reel because oftentimes when I'm throwing it out there and I'm trying to take those rocks and pop it over real quick, a quick little turn of the reel and I'm coming over all that stuff. If I've got a real slow reel, and even if I'm re reeling at you know, a normal speed, that bait's falling down because I'm not taking up as much line. So it can be harder to take the tops of grass or rocks or come over wood when you're using a slower reel. But again, that's all personal preference, whatever you like. I just like a little bit faster reel. Now, of course, the drawback to something like this, if you're using treble hooks that are a little bit larger, you might run into a little bit trouble with just a medium power rod. And if you're throwing the larger baits, I wouldn't really recommend that. This rod's only rated up to five eighths of an ounce, so you're teetering right on that line. You know, of course, if you're throwing a three quarter lipless or, you know, something right on that line, I would just bump up to the medium heavy. So those are the three combos that I've used for lipless crankbaits and square bills. Each one kind of has its own advantage and disadvantage. So you just have to pick what's the best for you. The type of things that you fish and the style that you fish, pick a combo that can kind of roll in between all those. Now, of course, if you have any questions about the combos, please leave those in the comments below. I would love to answer your questions. And if you have an opinion on something a little bit different than you're throwing, Leave that in the comments below as well. I love to hear about it. I love to look at new things and kind of tinker with stuff. So who knows, maybe one of you out there has something that's just a little bit better. I can give it a try, who knows, I might like it. Just like that little six foot seven rod, like six foot seven, I'm gonna feel like a kitty pole throwing this thing around, but I tell you what, it's been pretty nice. All of you fish and friends out there are absolutely awesome. I love the interaction with you all. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and become a verified fish and friend. And if you're already a subscriber out there, make sure you hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever Debo's is having a video for you. And again, thank you all so much. I love the support. Until next time.